Welcome back to the channel. This is Jared at 3Cs. This is our new shop build. This is gonna be that 390 race edition. But before we start tinkering with a bike and modifying it, I thought it'd be really cool to do a video. So if you just took a brand new bike out of the showroom and push it in your garage, these are the things that I would do to your bike before you even ride it. It's gonna be really simple and it's not gonna cost you any money to do. So let's jump into it. So the first thing I want you guys to do at home is dielectric grease your bike. There's connectors throughout the whole bike, so it's gonna take a little bit of time for you to find them. So let's jump underneath the headlight pod, we'll show you. We just got the two bands on the sides. We're gonna pull this off the side. And so now we can, it's all exposed up in here. And I've already disconnected some of these because we did go to TV Land and ride this bike already. And I have not greased them yet because I wanted to do it for the video. So what we're gonna do is we would just take our grease, we would open it and we would smear it inside of all these open connectors. And we also need to disconnect and put it inside of the ones that are already connected. So we would take this, smear dielectric grease in here and put it back together. Pretty much any connector you can find on this bike, I want you guys to grease it. So for our build, this is gonna be a race edition model. We're not gonna ride it on the road. So if you bought an RS model, you might not wanna do these next couple things, but what we're gonna do is we remove the horn. This is really simple. It's just placed right here. We unscrewed it. We took the whole clip right out of the assembly here. So the horn is out and it had these two connectors go into it in the back side here. And I, I like to electrical tape those separately. We do not want to pinch those together and electrical tape them. We want those to be separate. So the horn has been removed on this bike. Another thing that we removed is our speedo cable. So this goes from your caliper on this side. Come on over here, right? This starts down here. You can see where it threads into the um, rotor, or I'm sorry, into the caliper. So it screws in here and it runs up with the brake line all the way up through and it plugs into this connector here. It looks like a three prong, but there's only two wires in it. It plugs in here. It's just got the clips. We don't need, we're not gonna record miles on this bike and I don't wanna break this, we'll save it. If whoever buys the bike wants it, they can put it back on then. I also like to remove the left hand control block. We don't need this on the race editions for us just to trail ride because all this block has is left and right turn signal. It's got high beam and low beam. It's got the horn and we don't need this on the bike. Some customers ask, well, if I remove this, is my headlight gonna work? And the answer is no. So you're not gonna have a headlight. You're gonna be left with just the running light. So on the front of this, just that little bulb in there is gonna light up and you're gonna lose your headlight. So how we overcome that is we have to create a jumper wire so our power is the dark blue. It's over here on the right side. And then high beam is all the way on the left and then low beam is in the middle. So some folks will just take a piece of wire, put it, put it in there, dielectric grease it and then electrical tape it in. So that's like the super easy and cheap way to do it. Thankfully at the shop, I have some extra blocks that are, are old and destroyed. Uh, everything's broken off of them. So I just have this connector here. I had one I found in the shop. And so what I'll do with this is I'm just gonna plug it back in. I'm gonna remove all these other wires, of course, but all I'm gonna keep is my dark blue and I'm just gonna run it on high beam. I don't need low beam. So I'm gonna skip over here because my high beam was dark blue and pink. So dark blue and pink, I'm gonna clean this all up. I'll solder it together and, and that'll be my high beam. So I just, I just cheated and I have, every time I start the bike, the headlight's gonna be on high beam now. So for all of us that ride off-road, we don't want a tail light or the brake light. It's, it actually helps our competitors. If I've got a brake light going, they know I'm stopping in the next corner. So I don't want to give them an advantage behind me. There's still plenty of strength to pick these bikes up. The fender is super strong right here. You're not going to break it, picking it up. Even if you remove this built-in handle, not necessary. So what we do is there's uh, two, four, six bolts to drop this. And once you drop this down, I usually just set it on the fender. And what you're going to have poking out is this wire it's going to be coming out the corner of your fender here and now we'll go over here because this bike conveniently has all this exposed this is that same piece of harness right here underneath this this is that connector that plugs in to the rear rear tailpiece here this is what this looks like so i will take the rear fender off of the bike and i will completely remove this whole section of wire because all this is is turn signal and brake light tail light and I don't have the harness fully on this bike, so I can't show where it plugs in, but it, it literally plugs in right here to the harness. So I would remove this, tape up that end, leave it on the bike because it's part of the main harness, and I would just completely remove this right off the bike. So on these bikes, I've noticed um, a couple of phone calls from around the country. People are noticing that their oil level isn't where they want it to be. 
And I recommend if, if you notice that the oil is not where it should be, I would just flush it. I would totally drain all the oil and I would put the right amount back in that you, that way you know what in your new bike, what it has in it for oil. So the coolant's easy to check. We would just spin the cap off and we want the, the coolant level to be just above the fins and the radiator. You can't have the coolant to the bottom of the filler neck. That'll create too much pressure and it'll blow off out of your overflow tube. And then in the oil, the manual is going to give you guys the process on this. Keep in mind that the four strokes are a split case design. Engine oil is on this side of the bike, transmissions oil is on the other side, and you have the sight glass. The sight glass is going to show too much oil until we ride the bike. And then it'll show, um, when the bike is running, it'll show it right in the middle of the sight glass. But go ahead on your bike at home, follow the manual, follow the process, and just check your oil. You, you have to do that when you buy a brand new bike. Another thing that I'm noticing that a lot of dealers are not doing is they're not resetting the stepper motors on these new bikes when they sell them. So what that means is I have a whole separate video on how to reset a stepper motor. It's basically a choke on these four stroke fuel injected bikes. It's a little, it's a little rod that sticks out in an air passage and it sets the idle for these bikes. And these bikes are going all over the country, different elevations. Like today it's like 30 degrees out. Every time you guys go to a new ride area or the temperature changes, you want to reset the stepper motor. It's a huge thing. It changes the way the bike rides. So when we get to a hair scramble, first thing we'll do in the morning is we'll push this bike out and this is how we reset it. So it's a dead cold engine it has not been started. What we're going to do is start the bike and let it idle. We can't touch the throttle. It'll mess with the process. It has to be dead cold and start and let the bike warm up to operating temperature. You guys are lucky on the RS models. So if you have the Trail Tech Voyager, it tells you the actual um, temperature of the bike up on the display. You wanna let it get to like 215 and 219 degrees. If you have a cooling fan on your bike, when that cooling fan kicks on, it's good. You can, you can turn the bike off at that point. So resetting the stepper motor is so important. Nobody's doing this like I think they should be. It's a huge thing on the four strokes. So watch my video on resetting that stepper motor and, and do that periodically, your bike will run way better. So on these bikes, they come randomly from the factory with the clickers all over the place. They're not always set where you want them. In your manual, it'll tell you guys, um, on the race editions, there's a supplement that tells, talks about the forks. So on the beta website, you can find these manuals. And what we wanna do is we wanna adjust the compression clickers and the rebound clickers back to stock. The bike's 100% new, it's not broken in yet. I'm not gonna set the sag yet because that's gonna change in the first five hours of riding. And typically your first five hours is just breaking the bike in, getting comfortable on it, and then we start modifying it for you specifically. So I like to set the clickers back to stock. On um, these forks in particular, the compression's on top, and these ones are supposed to be 15 clicks from all the way in. So when they say in, we've gotta, we gotta turn it clockwise all the way in. So we'll get on the right screw here. So we'll go in, you can hear the clicks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so this has 12 clicks. So I went all the way in. I'm gonna back out till I hear one. So there's, there's, there's our base and we're gonna come out 15. So one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So those are our 15 clicks and I would do this for everything. You've got high speed, low speed compression on the shock with rebound. You've got rebound on the bottom of the forks. So I want you guys to set these all back to stock because as you just saw from factory, we haven't touched these yet. We are off by three clicks on just the one compression. So we'll go through the rest of this bike and set these. I wrote down all my numbers. Again, they're in your manual. And the last thing on these forks is you want to get the fork completely off the ground. Right now we're on a stand, so the, the wheel is not on the ground. And then you have your bleed screws. So come over here, Ryan. And then maybe from this angle, this top screw right here is our bleeder screw. And what you want to do is back that all the way out, and you'll hear it hiss if it's got any kind of uh, pressure in it. This one doesn't. So it, at this point, the screw is loose enough. We don't need to take the screw all the way out. You would hear the hissing. So that's good to do when the bike is new up on the stand, but you also want to do this quite often. So every time you guys go to ride, I would put the bike up on a stand, and I would relieve the pressure that's building up inside the fork tubes. These bikes come from the factory, um, really limited on your steering movement in the front. And uh, us in the Northeast, we wanna have a lot more movement and steering. So what we do is this side, I left the GM nut in behind to show you guys. And it's totally gonna depend on the model and how much clearance you have to do this. So this was already moved in quite a bit. This GM nut 
um, had quite a bit of bolt showing on the outside of it. And with the jam not even all the way in, we still have a ton of clearance. And the clearance that we're looking for, over here, Ryan, show. The clearance that we're looking for is to clear this radiator right here. We don't want it to hit the radiator. But let's go to the other side and we'll show what it looks like. So over here, we totally took the jam nut all the way out on this side. And this side still clears. So come, maybe if you can view that right there. It still lets it clear all the way. Okay, just tip it up. So we are not hitting. So on, on the right hand side in this model, I could take the jam nut all the way out. And on the left side, I kind of had to leave it in there. I could play with it, but I'm pretty sure it would hit. So on my model, on this 390 race edition, we removed the jam nut on one side and just screwed the bolt all the way in. And then on the left side, I had to leave the jam nut all the way against the bolt and run it in. What I notice a lot of the times in the crate, the bike is coming with a ton of throttle play. And I, I hate that. I want the throttle to be really responsive. I suppose some people like a little bit, but this is too much right out of the box. So all we do to adjust this is we pull our rubber boot back that's kind of protecting the end of the cable. And we're going to loosen the, the jam nut. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn this out. That way it's creating more pressure on the throttle cable. And you got to find a spot that you're comfortable with and it might take you a few times to figure this out but i literally there we go that for me that's what i want i want it to be like as soon as i touch the throttle i want it to be opening so you just reset it tighten your jam nut and you you slide your boot back over so make sure you adjust your throttle cable at home my next tip is going to be to grease the back side of the air filter i'm a huge believer in this you don't want any air and dirt to get past the air filter on the inside you can see right in the side here how much grease we have on this filter, and that's creating a seal. That way, um, nothing's getting past it. I can kind of pop it out and show you guys. If I just tip it out just a little bit, you'll see. If you see in there um, that the grease is creating a nice seal. So you really want to do that. I know it makes a mess out of your air filters, and honestly, I, I don't like the clean filters that have all that grease on there because it, it'll take forever to clean it. So I kind of do one and done with air filters anymore. So. Grease the outside rim of that air filter. It'll create a really nice seal and not let any dust in past the air filter. My next tip is to make sure the battery is fully charged. You don't know that the dealer took care of that. Here at the shop every night, I move the charger around in the showroom on bikes. So I wanna make sure when you buy a bike from us, you're gonna get a perfectly charged battery because if it's not a perfect 12 volts, it will not run right. So um, it's easy to do. I would pick up a lithium charger because you guys have lithium batteries in these new betas. So this one specifically is a lithium charger. You can plug it in, it's not gonna hurt the battery. If you use a standard charger, it can try to um, desulfate the battery and it'll, it'll ruin it. So really easy. All you do is plug this into the wall, of course, and you've got your positive and negative terminals right there in the top. Easy to get a hold of and just charge it. And I would do this periodically, especially in the winter if you're not riding the bike a lot. Uh, please charge your battery. That'll ensure that your bike runs like you want it to. One of the tips at home is a lot of people ask what this little green thing is. It usually ends up in the bottom of your gas tank anyway. We remove all of these on the new bikes and we sell them. What this is, is it's a check valve that's supposed to be in the bottom of your gas cap. So it goes in here and then theory, if you tipped over, this would prevent the gas from coming back out. But what happens is, is this sticks shut and especially in two strokes, it's gonna create a vacuum. It's not gonna be letting air come into the gas tank as the gas is coming out and it'll cause the bike to quit running right. So it's really easy to remove this in your garage. You just kind of take a couple of thumbs and you push against it and you can kind of rock it loose. Probably an O-ring in there as well. So just pop that out and uh, discard of this green cap underneath your gas cap. A huge one for me is using Never Seize wherever you can on these bikes. I'm a huge fan of this. It helps the long-term maintenance. It might not affect you right now because the bike is brand new, but as you use these bikes more, you want to never see stuff. As you get time on them, water gets in places, starts to corrode. A huge one for me is the uh, chain adjust blocks. So what we do is once you take this rear wheel off the bike, the axle will be out of the way. These are our chain adjust adjusters right here. So we would loosen this lock nut and un unthread this all the way out of the swing arm. We would take it completely out. I would rub never seize all over this bolt and I would stick it back in. I found older Hondas where this bolt gets literally stuck in the frame and it's a mess. You gotta drill it out, tap it out to a bigger hole. So please just think about never seize. Whenever you're doing your first tire change, I would take this bolt out and never seize it for sure. So my last tip for you guys at home with a brand new bike is to adjust all your levers and torque everything. So two strokes and four strokes both need to be torqued like a couple hours after you ride the bike for the first time. So 
get home, get the levers where you want them. You know what's comfortable, you guys have ridden before. So get those levers right where you want them. You can adjust the handlebars and the triple tree as well. You can loosen the clamp up, move it back and forth. It's all personal preference on your guys' end of things. But please torque everything. Go around the bike, make sure all your bolts are torqued. Their settings right in the manual it talks about what they should be. Check your triple tree bolts, check the axle bolts, caliper bolts, go through all the plastics, just kind of touch everything. It's really easy. It's either like an eight or 10 millimeter on these bikes. So just take one, take five minutes, run around your bike, make sure everything is torqued. And then after that first initial ride, come back and do it again. You don't want to be on the other side of a mountain pass and have your, uh, have your something fall out that you didn't, weren't expecting to. So this is just a really quick video. I hope it helps. If you guys just brought home a brand new four stroke, these are the tips for a four stroke. We'll probably do a video on two stroke tips because they're a little bit different. This has that stepper motor, battery stuff that's not quite as necessary in the two stroke. So thanks for following along. Hope you found it helpful. Enjoy the ride.